Now, the bill meant to ensure the radicalization of repentant Boko Haram militants and other insurgents has been trailed by mixed reactions from Nigerians. The bill, sponsored by the All Progressive Congress member representing Yobe East Senatorial District and former governor of Yobe State Senator Ibrahim Gaidam, passed the first reading on Thursday. But few hours after it passed the first reading, the bill attracted mixed feelings within Chibok community, which was attacked by the insurgents in 2014. While the, the bill is being condemned by Christian Association of Nigeria, it was, however, supported by the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. Now, joining us live via telephone is a security expert, uh, Kabir Ahmed, to speak on this. Good morning, Kabir. Yeah, good morning. Good Just a slight correction. My name is Dr. Kabir Adamu. Oh, thank you for that, uh, Dr. Adamu. Now, how do you see the proposed bill meant for the de-radicalization, de rather, of repentant Boko Haram members? So, just to give a, a little bit of background, the, the government is um, pursuing what it calls a counter-violent extremism mechanism. Now, under that mechanism, uh, there is an aspect called the radicalization. And then under that, you have what you call Operation Safe Corridor. Uh, it was started in 2014 under former President Goodluck Jonathan, and it's a new way of tackling terrorism. It was based on the realization that kinetic um, approach to countering terrorism is not working. So the experts came forward with this uh, countering violent ex extremism mechanism. The whole idea is to use soft um, measures to counter terrorism. And of course, one of them is the radicalization. So the government went ahead to set up this Operation Safe Corridor where it established an institution. Um, the idea was to put uh, repentant members of um, Jamaat al al Dawat al Jihad and other terrorist group, so that after going through the institution, they will come out you know, satisfied and go out. Now, um, under the former administration of Good Luck Jonathan, that policy was run by the Office of the National Security Advisor through uh, the country's um, counter-terrorism mechanism. Now, for some odd reasons, when this new government came, it changed the whole setup to the extent that um, the military took over the whole operations of the program. And so I think that is the first uh, component. In the first place, it's not meant to be a military program. So uh, there are um, studies that have been conducted that have shown it's possible to de-radicalize. However, the point I made earlier on is that it should not be a military-driven uh, um, issue. The, the whole concept of radicalization is rooted in socio-economic and sometimes psychological factors. So you need experts, uh, sociological experts, you need um, psychologists, you need um, the training in skill sets, peace-building mechanisms. And these are not military issues. There are experts in those fields that, is, that, that can do that. You also need clerics, um, um, the re religious clerics that understand the precepts. There are four precepts upon which jihadists use to recruit. So you need clerics that would um, discuss these four precepts, show the adherents how faulty the interpretation of those ideological precepts uh, were, were, were done. And then, of course, through that, they radicalize the component. So yes, it's possible, but not through military exercises. Well, um, the military is doing its part, but uh, the, my own understanding of a counter-terrorism strategy is that it is not a military alone affair. The military has taken too much on its plate. It needs to reduce uh, its involvement in the whole counterterrorism strategy. Yes, the kinetic component, the warfare that we're seeing, is military-driven. But all other components, the radicalization, um, strategic communication, counter-radicalization, economic development, these are not military issues. The concepts of take, hold, and rebuild, only take is military. Holding and rebuilding are not the priority of the military. So the military should quickly hand over those aspects. I know that there is a political economy, especially the funding, upon which uh, sometimes you hear corruption associated with this desire for the military to take over all of the counterterrorism approach. But it's high time that the military hand over these other aspects to other government departments.